Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel. My name is Willie Lacayu. Today we're going to get back to our 1978 Omni Fisher Ski Pack Boat. So, last time we uh, talked, our video stated that we were going to leave you with some food for thought. And that was three things. Three things that it takes to keep an engine running or to get an engine running. That was fuel, compression, and spark or fire. So the purpose of this video today is going to be to find out whether our engine runs or not. Last time I showed you what it looked like when I bought it home. Then I showed you what it looked like after nice high pressure cleaning. Cleaned up pretty nice for an old boat. And, uh, and again, I left you with food for thought. And here we are. Today we're going to find out if our 85 Chrysler, 85 horsepower Chrysler motor is going to run. Uh, and uh, I, I did some work previously on the boat. Um, I, I didn't videotape a whole lot of it. I took a lot of pictures of the process along the way. Um, I'll, I'll explain to you what I've done, um, what my process and my thinking is. Basically, when I when I come across one of these finds, whether it's a boat, a tractor, a car, a motorcycle, a four-wheeler, whatever, whatever the toy flavor of the day may be, or the challenge of the day may be, uh, to get it going, basically the same thing every time uh, we start with a good once over check everything real good so in the pictures coming forward you'll see how uh, you know we, we get under the hood or in this case under the cowling and we look to see what what the motor looks like um, the old boy that, that sold me this boat basically was extremely honest uh, uh, it's probably been one of the most favorable and enjoyable Craigslist uh, purchases that I've done so far. Uh, he came straight out and told me he, you know, he, he took this to a mechanic. The mechanic had it for a while. Uh, basically told him, and this this boat is this motor is toast. It's not worth working on. Uh, he was perfectly honest with that. Uh, basically sold me the boat as a scrap. Right. So there was no expectations. I'm very, very thankful to him and his family for selling me this boat um, and, and for being an, as open and honest as he was. That being said, I take full responsibility at this point to get this thing running. Um, at the end of this video, we will know if the engine is going to run or not. If it does, woohoo! Game on! Uh, knowing me, I can fix anything. The game, game is going to be on. So I, I plan on getting this thing running. Um, you know, first thing we're going to do, like I said, is uh, once over, check it all out real good. We're going to get in and check compression. Um, folks, if, if compression is good, then, you know, sky's the limit. There's no reason why this thing should run. If compression is bad, and what does that mean? Well, you have a difference of you know, 15 PSI, 10 PSI, uh, a large difference. Uh, between the three uh, cylinders, then then we have a problem. And, you know, it may not be worth messing with this boat. Other than you know, I love the challenge of opening it up, looking inside, seeing if I can source parts used off of eBay or you know wherever they may come from. Another used motor. <clears throat> anyway, uh, compression is good. Then we'll move on and see what. Uh, Fuel looks like. Break down the carburetors, uh, change the fuel lines, uh, remove gas tanks, remove fuel. Um, I plan on using the uh, gas tank out of my smaller um, boat, which, which you all have seen. Um, and uh, I know that it's fresh fuel in there, so you know, that, that's a no-brainer. Take the gas out of the old ones, old gas tanks, and see what they they look like. And, and if, you know, 
if it's bad, well, that may have been part of our problem. Who knows? Uh, then, you know, the last thing is, is fire. And again, it's not necessarily in any disorder. Uh, spark, compression, fuel, all that. I, I like to start with with compression because if compression is bad, well, you know, all that other stuff doesn't matter because it, it's not going to start. And if it does, it's going to have all sorts of problems. Uh, but if compression is good, the rest of it is a piece of cake. Uh, you know, carburetor rebuild. Uh, y'all seen how we, we built it on the small 8-horsepower uh, uh, Mercury. You've seen how I rebuilt carburetors on my 90-horsepower Mercury. It's on the uh, pontoon. So, okay. With all that being said, here we go, folks. We're going to get started. And by the end of this video, my deliverable to you is we will know where this thing is going to run. Not 10 videos from now, not 14 videos from now, but at the end of this video. If it runs, we're going to keep on going. Uh, next thing will be uh, electronics. We need to do something about the carpeting. We'll redo the carpeting. And then we'll get this thing on the water. Of course, if, if it doesn't, then you know, we're going to have to sit back and contemplate what's next. We rebuild this motor, we scrap this project, and go after another one. You know, we're three hundred dollars into this boat. That's not bad. I've had a lot of fun with this so far, and uh, I, I definitely, definitely expect to have a whole lot more fun with it. Thank you. Uh, strap in, hold on tight, enjoy the ride. Cause I'm fixing. Thanks for watching. Okay, so. In this shot, what we see is the uh, Chrysler 85 horsepower motor itself. Another side profile shot of it. As we take the uh, cover off, the cowling, kind of look under the hood there if you would. Uh, we see the three carburetors, some of the linkage, the fuel lines come into it. Uh, another better shot of the linkage. Everything seems to be hooked up. You see some screws missing off the intake plate on uh, this shot as well. Uh, that little red tie wrap there is kind of bothersome to me. Um, we'll have to investigate why that is, and uh, probably the holding the linkage because it's correct, incorrectly adjusted. Um, another shot there of the fuel lines, which need to be replaced. Uh, there's our fuel bowls, and closer look at the linkage. Um, here we're starting to look at the ignition system, what it looks like. There, uh, what we see is our fuel pump. They call it a little snowman. In the next shot, you'll notice that one of the fuel lines was actually disconnected. That was a little bit of a concern, but uh, easy to adjust. So these are the visuals that we see when we start looking. Uh, when you talk about a plate with all the information, that was it right there. Here we got a side profile shot of some of the electronics and uh, the actual things on each side of it. And let's kind of use for reference for me when I'm at work so I can uh, look things up during break parts wise. Uh, this is our solid state voltage regulator, part numbers, model number, CDI. Uh, both of these we really want to hope that there's no problems with. They're hard to get and very expensive. Here's a little diagram of the coloring code on the wiring which helped uh, when I started working on the um, starting relay and here we're going to start disconnecting the spark plug cables pull the spark plugs i've arranged them in this picture so i can see the manufacturer and the part number then i've rearranged them so we can see the bottom of them in the next picture coming up the electrode side of it and you know in willie's world those look to be uh, brand new so we should be in good shape there Here we're starting to look at compression. Uh, as we check compression, our dogs in the background are drinking water. And here you can see that we're somewhere around 125, 127 PSI on the first one. Uh, do it again on the second one and the third one. And uh, you know, the main thing we're looking for here is that, that everything is as close as possible. And you know, in, in a perfect world, 
which it was this day. We got 127 PSI in each cylinder, and you know, the sun shines over the lake, and what more can we say? Uh, there should be no reason that this engine will not start. Here we're going to go ahead and give it a shot, see what happens. So now we'll get into the meat and potatoes of it and pull the carburetors and, and take them apart, take the linkage off, find out what that red uh, tie wrap was all about. And what we found is the linkage actually is uh, wrong. Uh, the the uh, ketchup bottle is what I put my fuel mixture in when I go to start it. I squirt a little bit of fuel in each cylinder. Uh, sometimes I use starter fluid. I'm, I'm of the camp that does use starter fluid, lots of people don't. Inside this intake uh, plate you can get a little shot of, of the reeds when you look in there and see what the reeds look like and they were in good shape. Uh, here we've taken off the fuel bowl from the uh, carburetors and we can see the sediment and the crud in there. And uh, we'll, again the biggest problem just like in the Mercury uh, 90 horsepower from the pontoon was the gasket was kind of falling apart and uh, the fuel tank had a lot of crud in it. Uh, here we show again another shot of the sediment. Looks like sand, dirt, uh, cork. This is one of the biggest issues that I found which was the uh, synchronization was off. See the little mark should be right there, not as it was in the last picture. Once I got that done and uh, the carburetor's going, you know, we tried it again and see what happens here. There you have it folks. What more could we ask for?